The scripture this morning is taken from the first letter to Peter, chapter 1, verses 13 through 17. As I read this, it's challenging, and I'm sort of anxious to see what the pastor has to say about it. <laughs> so you'll have to listen carefully to him as he preaches this morning. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Thank you, Wayne. Nothing like pressure, right? Um, I don't know if you all noticed, but during the children's message, our light on the cross that has been out magically, well, not magically, but came back on, um, which is wonderful. I think it would be hilarious if it goes out while I'm preaching. But <laughs> In our scripture for today, we find Peter writing to Christians around the world that have been exiled from their homes. And he is writing them to discuss what it means to be holy. And Peter encourages the people not to turn back to how they used to live before they learned of and accepted Jesus. Because he wants them to remember that they are called to be holy in their conduct. Because Jesus has told them, since Jesus is holy, then his children will be holy too. Now this idea of being holy is something that I think we somehow both take for granted and at times use in ways that is simply not correct. We take it for granted because we say things like holy moly, holy guacamole, or in my household, holy shnikes, which is from an old movie. Um, but that word really does have meaning. So today I want you to want to talk about what it means to be holy, how we can ever hope to be holy, and how we can try to be more holy, and how we can avoid using holiness in a way that is inappropriate. So the word holy is derived from the old English word holig, meaning wholeness, and it denotes the presence of sacredness. In an object, in a being, a person, place, or an idea. But another good synonym, I think, for the word holy is pure. Something that is so good, so pure, and so full of goodness. Now, I think it is important that we establish this fact right out of the gate. There is no hope for us to live a life that is holy without Jesus Christ. You see, without Jesus Christ in your life you are at a place where there is no holiness. Now do not misunderstand me here, church. You can live your life as a good person and not be a Christian. There are many good people in the world that are not a part of the family of God. But however, being a good person is not the same thing as being holy. You see, being holy starts with accepting Jesus Christ. And then it goes on to be trying to work towards being holy is an act of worship. It is in the things that we do for the Lord. It is in the good deeds and works we do in His name. And it is when we take time out of our lives to offer Him our praise and worship that we can be, find, be found to be holy. And these acts themselves are holy. After all, in our scripture for today, Peter reminds us that Jesus said, we are to be holy because he is holy. So if you take Jesus out of the equation, there is no holiness to be found. So then how is it that we become more holy? How can we try and become more holy? Well, a good place to start after accepting Jesus as your Savior 
is to surround yourself with others that are working towards being holy. I'll put it to you this way. In all the teams that I have ever coached or been a part of, the ones that were successful were the teams that were working together towards a common goal. They were the teams that came to practice each day and really worked hard to get better. They were the teams where the players were committed to one another, where they were not just teammates, but friends outside of practice as well. And they truly cared about helping one another. Those were the good teams that I was a part of. And that's a great way to look at being holy or working towards being holy as well. If you want to grow, then find yourself teammates who want to grow as well. Find ways of encouraging one another to do better. Work with one another to grow your holiness and see if that approach doesn't bring about the results that you want. Now the flip side of this, and I have been a part of these teams as well, teams that were just going through the motions, teams where there was one or two superstars, and all the effort was put into those few players. And without a doubt, those teams ultimately failed to achieve as much as the teams that work together. So for those of you who don't speak sports, we can think of it this way. It is like when you put someone on a pedestal as the end-all, be-all of holiness, when that star player is lifted up above everyone else, that is what it is like. You see, we want to surround ourselves with other people trying to be holy, but what we cannot do is allow others to be seen as the holiest of holies. That is only reserved for Jesus. And when we think about being holy, we often think about those people that are put upon pedestals as truly great people. Ones that live their lives in such a way that we can point to them and say, yes, that is how I want to be as well. And I think of people like Mother Teresa or Martin Luther King. Perhaps you think of someone else. Maybe you think of the family member who brought you to church as a child. Maybe you think of a pastor or a leader that really you connected with well and how they encouraged you to grow in your holiness. Now all of them are good people. And all of them are most likely holy people as well. But the problem becomes when you start to point to them as the source of holiness. Because they are just people. And I can promise you there are times in their lives where they were much less than holy. Well, how do I know that? Well, as a pastor, I can tell you that we are expected to live our lives in holy ways. And we are indeed held to a higher standard than many other Christians. Now, I do the best that I can. And I try to live my life in holy ways. But if I am being honest, I will tell you that I do fail. So what happens when we put our hopes of holiness on people instead of Christ? Well, we are often let down. We see the stories of churches that fall apart because the pastor does something like embezzling funds or commits the sin of adultery. And now don't get excited. I fail, but I don't fail in those ways. However, we see the damage that is done to the holiness of others in the church when that leader fails. So brothers and sisters, we want to surround ourselves with others striving to be holy so that we can lift each other up. But we must always remember that the only true guidance for holiness in this world is Jesus Christ. Finally, I want to talk to you about something that I think we must be on guard for the most when it comes to being holy. It is this. We must be on guard to make sure that in our striving to be holy, we do not allow ourselves to take on an air of being holier than thou. See, at times it is easy for us to want to compare ourselves to others in their walk with Christ 
or to others in the world, we look at them and we say, well, I might fail, or I might do this, or I might do that, but at least I'm not failing the way that they fail. When we are successful at living a life that is holy, we sometimes take on a demeanor of, oh yes, look at me. I am the virtue, the paragon of virtue, to be held up before others. But even worse than both of those things, we find ourselves not wanting to associate with those that we deem to be less than holy. Brothers and sisters, there is room in the family of God for all his people. And indeed, we are called to make disciples of all the nations, not just the ones that we deem as good enough. So taking on the attitude of being holier than thou, in my opinion, has done more to destroy the walk of other Christians in this world than Satan could ever hope to do. Think about it. Have you ever walked into a church and, inst and known instantly that everyone was staring at you? And I don't mean staring at you, trying to figure out, oh, is that a new person? Oh, do I know them from somewhere? Or what should I say to that person to introduce myself? I don't mean staring at you like that. I mean staring at you like this. Who do you think you are to walk into my church? I know you and I know what you've done. And you don't belong here. I would never associate with the likes of you. Now, if you have never had this happen to you, I pray that it never does. And if you had had this happen to you, you know how damaging it is for your walk with Christ and your work towards being holy. Now, I've had this happen to me in my own life. And I can tell you firsthand, it is not a good feeling. And if you've had it happen to you, I praise God that you are in church today. Because brothers and sisters, when someone goes through this, when they are met with someone that treats them as unworthy, that person often walks out the door and never goes back into a church ever again. So when you find yourself starting to have these thoughts, of look at me, I am so holy, you better stop. You better stop and you better remind yourself that you are a sinner too. You better stop and remember that you are only redeemed and made holy through Christ. In our scripture for today, we are told that we are holy because he was holy. Now, if we are to be holy like Christ, then we are to be holy and humble. You see, Jesus didn't go around saying, Look at me. I am so great. No, he went to the ones that were the lowest of lows, and he said, join me. He didn't look down on them. He humbly asked that they follow him so that they could be made holy too. Now, if we can remember that, brothers and sisters, if we stop those thoughts of holier than thou are, we can begin to work towards building up one another to be more holy. We can strive together to make this world a more holy place, not through our own holiness, but through the power of the most holy, Jesus Christ. My challenge for you this week comes from an old hymn, and it is this. This week, I want you to take time to be holy. Amen.